Big Slick here, and today's project is a Seberg MRA1-L6 amplifier from a Seberg B jukebox, approximate vintage 1950-1951. And uh, this jukebox has, believe it or not, been in continuous operation since it was new. It's had almost no downtime during the entire 70 years of its existence. The current owner has owned the machine for 20 years, and it's worked flawlessly the entire 20 years until early this year in April. The amp here blew the two-amp fuse here. And I went out and checked it out. Couldn't find anything wrong with it other than he had had some external speakers for quite a few years hooked up to these terminals and somehow either he or somebody else had these terminals loose and they were flopping around and I said well it's a possibility that that's what tripped the fuse so replaced the fuse and seven months later fuse blew again so now it's time to check it out and find out what's wrong and I had a good idea pretty quickly what's wrong with this amp but I'll show you a few things that are interesting. Two of these original filter caps are still in the circuit and they're 70 years old and they are perfect. In fact, when I did a quick check of the ESR of the two that were removed, I'm convinced that they were actually just replaced for preventative maintenance or something in the past or someone didn't know what they were doing because honestly these caps are fine too. All four of these electrolytics are in excellent shape. This amp plays fantastic, has no sound quality issues, just A plus phenomenal. Okay, to show you here that uh, these are still in circuit here. So they, and like I say, they've been operating continuously for 70 years. Uh, this jukebox, even though it's owned by a home user, gets more use than any home jukebox I've ever heard of. And I've been in the hobby for over 30 years. This thing is, it probably gets 30 hours a week use for sure. Maybe even 40 hours. I mean, this guy plays the heck out of this machine. And it's been 20 years, like I say, until early this year. It had no issues at all. So it's had a basic cap job done to it. Judging by the components, somewhere between 25 and 30 years ago. Now the question is, what would cause a very intermittent fuse to blow in this amp? So this is a case where you probably need some experience because very unlikely it was going to be a filter cap or anything like that. When they short, they short. They're not going to be something that blows once every six or seven months. So there's something else going on here. And my first thought was to jump straight to the transformers because I'm noticing at this point a lot of this old vintage gear is 70, 80 years old. You're getting breakdowns in the, in the transformers or the actual circuit wiring. The insulation on the wires is uh, breaking down. And so any place they could possibly rub against a metal chassis or come through a chassis they're starting to cause major problems. Well, I'll show you here that my suspicion was right, and this was actually a quick troubleshooting project, although it's going to take more time to replace. The output transformer is bad, and the problem is, is that you're getting leakage between the, pr the primary and the case. Common problem as these transformers are getting old, and that's why... I don't even think it's smart to try to find an original to replace it with. You're still swapping in a 70-year-old part that was probably stored in less than ideal conditions. And so you're just probably asking for the problem again if it doesn't already have the problem. Here's what the setup we're going to be looking at is. First of all, we have a fluke meter on resistance. And I will show you how this will give you an idea. You may have a problem, but you might not spot it with something like this. What you really need is an insulation test, an insulation resistance test. And if you have a high voltage capacitor checker, such as this Heathkit IT11, or one of the uh, 450 volt models, even that'll work fine. You, you test the transformer just like if it's a capacitor. You're going to be testing between 
any of the windings and ground. Now you need to look at the circuit to make sure that something isn't grounded there. But like for example in this output transformer, nothing is grounded on the primary. You have two plate leads and a center tap. There should be no continuity at all between this primary and the physical chassis here. If you do, you're getting insulation breakdown somewhere. And that's what's going on here. And just depending on just subtle movements, you're going to get more or less resistance. And I've, I'm measuring anywhere between, say, 4,500 ohms, which is a lot. I mean, it's extremely high in terms of insulation resistance leakage, but that may or may not be enough to immediately blow a fuse. And sometimes the resistance is a lot higher, so therefore the fuse is not going to blow. And so that's what's going on here. Now I'm going to open this transformer up just in case I get lucky and find a problem near the edge of the of the casing here. But most likely, 99% chance that's just going to be wasted time opening it up and this is going to have to be replaced with a modern substitute that will work, although not be original. So uh, I'll show you where how this shows on the ohm meter and how sometimes it looks like there's no problem or that you position the wires and if you could like keep it there, you're, you'd be all right. But it's misleading. You really need to shock it with high... DC voltage in order to have this problem prop up. So what we're going to do is take the ohm meter now, put it there, and we'll take one of these windings here and see what we got here. Oh, right now we're testing anywhere from 12 to 15k just floating around. Well, this is a major problem here. But let me see if I clip this on here. I'll try to wiggle the wires around and we'll see if we can get that to go out. Okay, we're clipping on to the center tap here now of the primary of the output transformer. And as you see, we're getting some leakage here, so that's quite a lot of leakage. Now, as I wiggle these wires here, you'll see that we're getting to a point right there that that looks like that's good. You're getting no reading at all, and I think this fluke goes up to 40 meg or 50 meg, which actually isn't the greatest, but, you know, that's that's decent. And so, okay, now I let go, and you have no reading here on the meter. So you would think this is fine, and if you could just carefully position these wires here, this would work. Well, I'll show you how this, this isn't the case. So we'll take this off of here. And we're going to put high voltage to it. In fact, in, in this case, the leakage is so severe, you don't even have to put high voltage to it. Even anywhere around, we'll start out at, say, 50 volts, and it'll probably show that. And I'm not even on the sensitive setting here. I'm on the intermediate sensitivity here for leakage. Okay, so we have our test set up here. Let's see what we got here now. Okay, it's okay there. There, now I clicked it up to 100 and we're already showing leakage there. It's already shocked it to the point where you got that. And even if I flick it up to the electrolytic setting, as you see, we're testing full hardcore leakage. So that's this is the true test on something like this. You should be able to fire this up all the way down here on the paper mica setting, all the way up to 600 volts, and you should get nothing. It should be completely open. So now what we have to do is, now that we've troubleshooted this, we're gonna take this transformer off, which is quite a big project because this has all kind of extra taps for various different features that you could have connected with old style external speakers and things of that nature. So this all has to get disconnected. We'll pull it out. We'll take the uh, cover off of the, of the transformer and see if we hit luck. Probably not, and there will end up being a second follow-up video to this with replacing it with a modern transformer that will work. This amp, in case anyone's not familiar with it, uses a pu parallel push-pull 6v6 output stage. This was only used for, I believe, one model of this Seaburg amp 
for the Seaberg models A and models B, M100A and M100B. After that, they went to a 26L6 conventional Williamson type of amplifier. And, uh, but, you know, this works fine. And like I say, th this thing was fantastic, played beautiful. But, you know, we're at the point where it needs servicing. I, you don't even have to disconnect like on this amp from these plate leads. But just in case there was a far out chance that there was a breakdown in one of the sockets. I just isolated all three wires of the primary here. And you could feed this in anywhere. You don't have to feed it in at the center tap. You can feed it in at one of the uh, one of the plate leads too because it's it's all one winding. It doesn't matter. You're going to get the breakdown there. Now, if I put this on back on the ohmmeter, even though we haven't touched anything, you will most likely see here that the resistance on the meter has come back, and there it is. Now it's all the way down to 1.7k ohms. So just shocking it with the DC is causing this to just totally jump around. So it's almost guaranteed not going to be fixable in terms of the actual transformer. But let's pull it off now, open it up, and just see if we hit luck today. What we're going to do, just as preventative maintenance, even though these, these caps are fine, they're 70 years old, I'm going to just redo this uh, power supply stage. I will check some of the plate load resistors here to make sure they're still within spec. And this, like I say, this is fine because I, I've heard this amp. I know how good this sounds. I've personally checked the bias and everything on the output tubes. It's reasonable, although these are all running hot now. You should really install a 150 ohm resistor here in this cathode for the cathode biasing resistor because this is around 135 ohms, even though that's a slight difference, it's enough to cool these down to get these to be operating within spec again. Right now, these are being pushed pretty hard, yet surprisingly, for 20 years of continuous shape, the old American 6V6 GTA has handled this fine. If it would have been a cheaper, older style 6V6, they'd have probably been cooked by now. Okay, the transformer is apart here, and as you can see, Here's where you're having some arcing going on right here, and it's all the way in the center here near the core. So this isn't going to be fixable. I'll have to pick up a new replacement suitable for a parallel push-pull 6v6 output design. And here's actually another place where you can spot it too. On the back of the insulator here, you will see... Right there, there is where it was arcing in the burn mark. And if you position this up, this is exactly where it where it was lining up at right there. This is what you were getting. You were getting leakage to the case. This is happening on tons of these old transformers now that are hitting this 60 to 70 to 80 year age range. They're all starting to break down no matter how they've been cared for. And at this point, you know, you need a replacement. See you in the next video. Part 2 will be installing the new transformer when I get it.